as you can imagine, most of the year sevens and a handful of year eights who have signed up to this are the students who have self-identified and said, look, I'm a struggling student. I'm a person who doesn't really get it. And it's the, the person I, I tried to mimic to you before, someone who really knows I need some help with this, okay? So in some ways, your goal as a tutor is couched in terms of that, like where they've come from, their own self-concept. I'm a struggler. So your main role in that way, negatively speaking, is to make them not struggle anymore, or at least to be comfortable with their struggle. To be able to say, okay, I don't get it immediately, but I'm all right with that. I'm confident enough now. I've, show, I've been shown, you know, I don't know if you guys remember what it's like to be able to try and do something, and just to get it wrong repeatedly. It's incredibly discouraging. So a huge part of your role is not just like the academic stuff, but can you emotionally support someone so they can get up again and give it another go? So that's the negative side. We don't want them to be so um, antagonistic and, um, and struggling with this subject. However, this is what the other side of the piece of paper is for. We also want you to have a positive goal. Like I'm not just working towards not something. I'm not just working towards getting rid of something. I want to replace it with something positive. Okay? And what that is, is this. I wouldn't expect that most of you have seen this before. Um, it's from the syllabus document that all of you have been learning from for the last well, it's K to 10, so that makes it 11 years. This represents, I know you can't see it um, all too well in terms of the details, but this represents one, two, three, not intended for dramatic effect. One, two, three major areas of mathematics that you learn about. We call them strands, right? Um, you've got number and algebra, and you guys know what that is. Measurement and geometry, stuff like volume, surface area, and so on. And then over here in the corner, you've got statistics and probability. Again, something you're familiar with. Okay? Now, what you see going out in those sectors that are colored are all of the different topics. So uh, 2D space, mass, volume and capacity, patterns and algebra, fractions and decimals. Things that you'll be familiar with as the titles of chapters in textbooks that you've worked through. Okay? However, that's not what I want to draw your attention to. I want you to look at the middle there. Right? Now, if you squint really hard or if you look at the piece of paper in front of you, there are five, well, they're kind of like verbs, I suppose. There are five verbs that are not content. They're not like ideas or concepts that you learn. They are skills. They're <coughs> ways of thinking. And we call them working mathematically. Okay? This is the positive image that we're working towards. And so I really want to quickly give you a sort of nutshell idea of what is it? Like, what is your picture for what you want your 2T to end up with at the end of the year? You want them to be able to do one, two, three, four, five things, okay? So, turn to that table with me. We're going to go through them one at a time. The first one is communicating. Now, each of these words is a word that is borrowed from everyday language, but we have a really specific meaning in a mathematical context for what communicating means. So here's my definition. You can have a look at that first little empty spot. Communicating, this is as simply as I can put it, is expressing an idea. It's expressing an idea in a way that others can see. Let me say that again. Communicating is expressing an idea in a way that others can see. It is no good expressing all these kinds of ideas and no one, it's all gibberish to someone else. You're not communicating if that's what you're doing. Right? Communicating is about being able to take an idea or a picture or something and be able to put it in someone else's mind. Now, why is that important? Some of these are easier than others. I've got a, a, a sentence that I've crafted for you that I want you to fill in for me. Right? Here's why communicating is important. It is so important, and it's why it's the first one I've mentioned. Right? Communicating is important is because an idea is more powerful when it can be shared. Let's say that again. An idea is more powerful when it can be shared. If you have an idea, that's nice, but you're never going to start a revolution or change a society if you're the only one who has that idea. Okay? But if there's a common movement, all these people who have the same idea all at the same time, you can move a culture. So, let me give you an illustration for that, right? In fact, here's my illustration. Yeah, my water went well. Here we go. Now, the whole idea of doing like still life like this, right, is that a guy is standing over there, but you want to be able to communicate visually something onto a piece of paper so that if someone doesn't see this anymore, if all they've got is your communication, right, they'll be able to recognize this idea in the future. And that's why we place such an important emphasis on working out, on diagrams, on charts, all these kinds of things. They are all mathematical forms of this, of communicating, putting an idea from your head into someone else's. 
<coughs> you've got to think about it this way. It's kind of like telepathy through paper. Okay, now, second idea, coming back to this, was problem solving. Okay, so we're looking at the second row now. What is problem solving? Here's my description of what problem solving is. Problem solving is knowing, and not just knowing, but picking effective strategies for working through problems. It's two things, knowing and picking effective strategies for working through problems. Knowing and picking effective strategies for working through problems. Now, why does it matter? Why is it important? Well, it's because hopefully you guys feel mathematics is interesting, you know, but mathematics, and mathematics is elegant, but it's not just, here's my third column, mathematics is not just interesting and elegant. It is also useful and effective. You can do things with it. You can put all of those fractions or decimals or percentage or whatever it is, you can put it in a context and you can solve a problem with it. Right? So mathematics is not just interesting and elegant, it's useful and it's effective. Okay? So here is my image for this. Right? What problem solving looks like is can you t go from A to B if Castle Towers is in fact where you want to go. Right? Now skills are one thing. Being able to turn your wheel to the left, break, indicate. But applying it to an actual problem, that's problem solving. Getting from somewhere, you don't know how to get there, but you put together all your skills and you map out a path. Okay? That's what problem solving means in a mathematical context. Let's move on. Number three, reasoning. Okay. Reasoning is a simple one. We do lots of reasoning whenever we do proof. Reasoning is, here we go, using logic, using logic to argue for something being true or false. Using logic to argue for something being true or false. That's what reasoning is about. Okay. Why is reasoning important? Reasoning is important because, here's my um, why it matters is because reasoning is the way mathematicians, it's how we make progress. We actually advance through. It's how we make progress. Mathematicians take things we already know and build on them. Mathematicians take things we already know and we build on them. That's how every classical geometric proof starts, right? Here's a shape. You know like one or two things. And using reason, <coughs> using logic, you can draw a conclusion, which is exactly what someone told me what this is. This is a crime scene, right? Forensic investigators, they take clues. They use logic. They use deduction, right? And then they can prove, they can reason by means of these things to arrive at a conclusion. Say something is true, something is false. Someone is guilty, someone is innocent. That is what we are doing every time we construct a proof, every time we reason. Almost there with the tail half. Understanding. Okay. Understanding. You might think, well, understanding is a bit obvious, right? Like, isn't that what everything is about? No, no, it's something specific. <laughs> understanding is seeing and using connections between ideas. Connections is the real key, right? Understanding is seeing and using connections between ideas. Okay. Now, why does it matter? Why does it matter to be able to understand something? Well, if you've ever been able to use something before but not really understand how it works, you don't really get to use the most effective sort of use of that item. So, when you actually get something, this is my third column, when you actually get how something works, you need to actually see through it to other problems. And here's my illustration. So my kids are two, five, and seven years old, okay? And so they know what a remote control is. They know what a remote control is. They know how to press buttons on it, but they do not understand how it works. So when they pick one up, they don't understand why when they're in another room, they're mashing the buttons furiously and nothing's happening. What is it that they're failing to understand about a remote control? What is it? You have to point it, right? There's like this little infrared thing. And then when you point at it, you have to be close enough and there has to be nothing in the way. It works. If you understand, you can see through it to understand what's really going on. Okay? That's understanding, seeing the connections. Lastly. What is the last one? Oh, that's right, fluency. Uh, what's fluency mean? This is the last of the working mathematical tools. Fluency is working with tools and methods, here's the key, quickly and accurately. It's working with tools quickly and accurately. Um, the reason why it matters is because it enables efficiency. Like, you don't need to think about tying your shoelaces or brushing your teeth anymore. It just happens, right? Because you are fluent at it. You develop that skill, right? 
it enables efficiency, and it frees up the mind to think critically, to actually think critically about what you're doing, rather than being focused on bunny ears, left goes under, loop, up, oh, what have I done? Okay? And here's an example, here's my illustration, right? You are all fluent in English. You don't have to work out like my five-year-old son does. Wait, which letter is that again? Hold on, okay, wait, I've got my H is the, oh, got it, right, H, right? What's the next one? He has to go through every single one. He's not fluent yet. So therefore, he can't understand what this means. Unlike the way you can. Because you are fluent in a language. And the same thing happens for maths, right? We are fluent in skills. And once you are fluent with those, you can build on them and go other places. Communicating. Problem solving, reasoning, understanding, and fluency. These are what you're trying to build for your 2T.